behind Winnipeg in the Central. On the other side, Seattle's been slumping, and only the Coyotes have fewer points among all Western Conference clubs. Inside the arena with West Walls, I'm Anthony LaPanta. This is the final stop on a three-city trip for Minnesota. Stop number two didn't go their way in Vegas. A key turnover by Matt Dumba led to what turned out to be the game-winning goal for Vegas. But sometimes it's how you respond in those spots. Absolutely, and and some of the sound coming out of the locker room was was better than what we saw on the ice. And obviously, Matt Dumba turned the puck over in the in the in the neutral zone, gave the the other team Vegas a three nothing lead. And listen, he didn't hide after the game. Okay, he came in there, he answered the questions, he showed guts, he showed his teammates, he answered all the questions. It was my mistake. I let my teammates down. I can't tell you how far that goes in the locker room if you're trying to build respect. I'm not sure this was something Matt Dumba would have done if two, three years ago. He's taking wearing a letter very, very seriously, and he mentioned tonight he's going to back that up with a great game, and we'll see how he does tonight. He's been a big part of a defensive core that has been very offensive-minded for Minnesota. He's the highest-scoring defenseman for the Wild, and the Wild boasts the highest-scoring defensive core in the league, 41 points by defensemen already this year. What a weapon this team has, the Minnesota Wild. I mean, there's no teams around the National Hockey League that have five six defensemen that can skate get involved on the five on five cycle we've watched it all season long the last four or five games in particular have been just completely off the charts and the while they're using that weapon every night it's not like in and out uh, of using getting defensemen involved we saw that last night with jared spurgeon scoring a big goal this Seattle team is very, very good defensively. The Wild defensemen are going to need to get involved if they want to create offense here tonight in Seattle. 24 points in the last five games by Minnesota defensemen. That's the most in the league over that stretch. The Wild could also use some offensive production from their go-to scorers up front, including Kirill Kaprizov. For more on that, we go ringside and Kevin Gord. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. It took him a while to get going. Game number nine before Kaprizov got his first goal this season, but nobody with this team was worried about number 97, and the numbers speak to that. You look at active players throughout the National Hockey League and how quick they reach 30 goals. Kaprizov in among some pretty impressive company. Players like Austin Matthews, Sidney Crosby, Evgeny Malkin, and Alex Ovechkin. When I talked to Dean Evison this morning, he said the challenge on most nights is how much attention Kaprizov gets. The teams know about it. There are layers of defense. And he said, we want our skill players like Kirill to be creative, but they've got to do it in the right part of the ring. Games like tonight against a team like Seattle that likes to clog up the neutral zone, we need him and Harvey skill guys to be more efficient there once we get in the offensive zone then the creativity can start this guy's got a special set of skills we saw it that power play early on the road trip when he tucked in that five on three goal he and zuccarello getting the magic going he's got five points in his last five skates it should be rocking in here once again tonight the wild look to get a little revenge and take down the seattle kraken the wild look to get the win and finish out the road trip with a two and one record puck drop is next Duluth Trading Fire Hose. Impressive offensive performance against Arizona and banked their fourth consecutive win. Then they went bust in Vegas, falling to the Golden Knights on a disappointing night in Sin City. Tonight, Minnesota tries to get things rolling again in Seattle, looking for some payback after a loss to the Kraken two weeks ago. Late night hockey from Seattle comes your way next. Kirill Kaprizov in the Minnesota Wild trying to make it a winning road trip. This is the third city on a three-city tour of the West Coast. Minnesota beaten in Seattle in their earlier visit this season. Our Northwood Ford starting goaltenders. Cam Talbot getting the start for the Wild here tonight. He was he played a couple weeks ago against the uh, Seattle Kraken. Took the loss but was the Wild's best player. Stopped 34 of 36. And at the other end, Philip Grubauer. Vesna finalist last year finished third and Vesna played all but three games this year for the Seattle Kraken and as of right now not completely on top of his game while got to shoot everything and we are underway from climate pledge arena in Seattle wild come away with a loose puck here Kevin Fiala carries it over the Seattle line tries to work free from Giordano and throws one on goal Grubauer makes the stop our Taco Bell take of the night goaltender that just made the save there looks sharp but he is not on top of his game everybody knows it shooting mentality coming into the game is going to be primary and you can tell right there that first play shooting the puck on the wall try to get as many shots as possible and take advantage of the fact that Philip Philip Grubauer is not right on top of his game Giordano with it back of the net for Seattle Felino, Fiala, and Erickson Eck, the forwards to open for Minnesota here's Jordan Eberle one of the hottest scorers in the league seven points 
during a four-game scoring string. Everly sends it around to the point. Giordano holds there for Seattle against pressure from Fiala. Plays back down into the Minnesota zone. Felino on it. Sweeps it across safely to Spurgeon. His pass out of the reach of Fiala. And it'll be an early icing call against Minnesota. Our Toyota key stat shows you the comparison between these clubs. Minnesota second in the league, averaging over 35 shots on goal per game. On the other end of the spectrum, Seattle prevents them as well as anybody. They're number one in the league in terms of fewest shots against per night. Yeah, and I think coming into the season, we knew the Seattle Kraken, that was going to be how their team was going to be built. Surprisingly, the Wild are right near the top of the league at getting rubber on net. Usually they finish in the top in the bottom 20. Here's Felino with it for Minnesota. Throws it off the glass and out to center. Erickson Eck tried to push it by Larson. Matt Dumba retreats through neutral ice as Minnesota makes a line change. Dumba and Brodine, the defenseman now. It's the Kaprizov, Zuccarello, and Gaudreau line for Minnesota. Gaudreau carries it into the Seattle zone, plays in behind the net. Larson tangles there with Kaprizov. Kaprizov trying to knock it loose. He does, wins a puck battle. Then he's tied up by Yanni Gord. Brodeen down from the point. Helps to keep this play alive for Minnesota. Zuccarello got it to Kaprizov. He's tied up by Gord along the end boards. Kaprizov had it for a moment. Now got it back to Zuccarello. Looked like Zuccarello was trying to send it all the way to the point, but it was deflected and controlled by Yarncroke at center. He dumps it into the Minnesota zone. Yeah, any, any team that's coached by David Hackstall, you know that their wingers are going to collapse. That's what makes them so good defensively. You could see both of their wingers when the Wild were working behind the net. Both of their wingers were standing right on top of the paint. So the points tonight for the Wild, Anthony, are going to be wide open, and we're going to need to move it from low to high to be able to stretch things out and create... Face-off coming here in the Seattle zone, just about two minutes in. Hartman will draw for Minnesota. McCann counters for Seattle. Hartman with new line mates tonight. He plays between Greenway and Pitlick. Johansson in for Susie and around behind for Dunn. Two of the five skaters for Seattle. At this moment, played for Minnesota last year. Here's one of them, Johansson. Comes to center. Donato, another former Wild player, flips it toward the net, and it's gloved and held. Faceoff coming in the Minnesota zone. Yeah, Marcus Johansson and Ryan Donato both playing for the Wild on the same line. That was not the case the last couple games. David Haxtell juggling up his lines. Didn't like what he saw against the Anaheim Ducks a couple nights ago, juggling the lines, which is what most coaches do around the National Hockey League when not feeling good about their game. This guy here this morning came in for his pre-game presser or whatever I mean he had a, he had his game face on he was he's he was ready geeky with it tried to center it's deflected and just wide Tanev sends it back out to the line long shot by Alexiak goes off the end boards geeky tried to tuck one in a couple plays on this shift and the Kraken thought they had beaten Talbot neither one got behind him and Nico Sturm leads the rush the other way Sturm knocked down by Tanev who broke his stick on the play Tan of an early fan favorite here in Seattle. They call him Turbo because his engine never stops. Including warm-ups. <laughs> we watched him in the pregame warm-up. He was just uh, flying around. Hair looked like Ron Duguay back from the mid-80s flying around. I was thinking more like the Hanson brothers. Well, yeah. <laughs> Puck comes loose in the Minnesota zone. And we get an offside whistle against Seattle. And Seattle getting in on the on the four check here. Just throw the puck at, on the net, and Talbot uses his blocker, tries to spit it away. Looks hit like it hits the bottom of his blocker, and thought maybe it slipped in behind him. And again, a big hit by Tanev there. And you know the uh, Seattle Kraken are right near the top of the league, right near the top of the league in hits, and they've come out here hitting here in the first period. Spurgeon gets hit in the corner. The loose puck picked up by Erickson Eck, who starts it ahead for Minnesota. Got it to Felino at center. Across for Spurgeon. Spurgeon tried to go back to Fiala. Erickson Eck from behind the net with Felino setting up out front. Goes to the line for Spurgeon. And across to Goligoski. Goligoski into the middle. Fiala fires. That was deflected and knocked down by Dunn. Cleared and out. Goligoski back to pick it up for Minnesota. Great positioning by Felino. Right on top of the paint. Got his skates 
You want to get your skates outside of the paint. Unfortunately, that puck did not find its way to the front of the net from the point. Dumba plays it ahead. Zuccarello relays it down into Seattle territory. Grubauer there to play it for the Kraken. Zuccarello out to the line. Dumba across to Brodine. Into the middle. Kaprizov fires, and that went just wide. Grubauer came up empty on the glove save. And that is exactly that low to high play there is where the Wild are going to need to create offense. The top half of the zone and, and try to create a little three on two at the very top, just like they did on that last play with Kaprizov. Jonas Brodine back to pick it up for Minnesota. Throws it in behind the wild goal. John, Dumba me, got it to Kaprizov. And now back of the net, it's Dumba. Can you hear me? Dumba behind the goal for Minnesota. Can you hear me, John? Wild will change, so Dumba resets. Plays ahead to Brodine. Jonas Brodine through neutral ice for Minnesota. Tipped in by Pitlick. Hartman had it for a moment with Greenway breaking toward the net. And now it comes free for Alexiak. He gives to Donato. Kraken have numbers at the Minnesota line. Giordano with a shot. And Talbot knocks that one away. Greenway starts it back for Minnesota. Greenway comes through center. Hits the Kraken line. His pass behind Pitlick. Pitlick tied up by Donato. And the loose puck controlled by McCann. McCann jumps around Merrill and fires wide. Long rebound held by Donato. Out to the line, Alexiak a shot. It was deflected by Pitlick, kicked away by Talbot. Greenway to the line, but Giordano able to hold. Merrill now has it for Minnesota. Reverses for Kulikov. Wild in the midst of a change, so Kulikov takes his time coming out from behind. Tanev was knocked down by Merrill. Nico Sturm with it there, back safely into his own zone for Merrill and ahead now to Bukestad. Kulikov. Plays to the wing, Duhame works across the Kraken line. Around behind, it's too far for Bukestad. Spurgeon just off the bench, able to hold. Loose puck just eluded Duhame. And the Kraken come through neutral ice with Tanev. Tanev across for Geeky, knocked away from him. And Bukestad's able to clear the zone for Minnesota. Susi back to Tanev. Great pace early in this first period. Both teams coming off a loss, as you knew the first period. Both teams were going to come out hard. It's been physical. Good puck movements. Hasn't been a whole lot of great great A chances at, on both ends. It's kind of what we thought was going to happen. This was going to be one of those games that was going to be tough to get through the neutral zone, and that's exactly how it's played out here early. Icing called here against Minnesota. Faceoff coming all the way down in the wild zone. Yeah, we mentioned earlier about the wingers coming down. This is exactly where the wild are going to have to create this offense. Look at Kaprizov up at the top. A quick little three on two. Seattle was not able to sort it out right away and just because they couldn't sort it out right away Kaprizov had a little bit of space but creating offense down below the goal line is going to be really difficult because the Seattle Kraken wingers just collapse so far so close to the net get it from low to high and see if you can create that way here comes Jaden Schwartz for Seattle and he fires it deflects up and out of play and we get a whistle 0-0 on a fast paced start in Seattle Actually, behind the scenes, behind the counter with a crowd, there was singing, there was clapping. And yes, the Swedes took part in the throwing of the fish. When I talked to Bernie, he said, I just didn't want to drop it. But the athletic skills took over. So growing up in Sweden, I did a lot of fishing. Walleye, smallmouth bass, so it's fitting that he's here in Minnesota. He's fished there, Ed really enjoyed it. Some of their teammates came with to support him. Complete passes all the way around, and a big crowd gathered around to see the wild all get the job done with those big fish at Pike Place. Fish market, guys. I watched the same thing last night, and I didn't know it was coming. So I was walking by, and all of a sudden, the crowd started doing some chant, and this guy out on the fish stand picks up the fish and starts chucking it back and forth with the guy behind the counter. I had never seen it either myself, and that is something to see. And, and that's that's what's so great about the NHL this season. The Wild, obviously, we're not dealing with a COVID situation here as much, and players can get out and, and, and get to see different cities and spend more time together. It's, just great to see, and the Wild did a use use their uh, day off accordingly. Alexiak, as it poked past him by Felino, comes loose back in the Kraken zone. Giordano has it for Seattle. Deflected in behind Talbot, he tees it up for Brodine. Jonas Brodine for Minnesota, chased out by Schwartz. Dumba takes a hit from Wenberg. Brodine there to support the play. 
Ahead to Marcus Foligno and back now to Dumba. Dumba leads for Fiala. Dumba stepping up on the play. Got it caught in the skates of Erickson Eck. He's tangled up there with Wenberg. And again, that's what makes Seattle so difficult. They're so good through the neutral zone. Fiala leaves to Dumba. Back to Fiala. A shot on a blocker saved by Grubauer. Brodine holds his own for Minnesota. Gets by Felino back of the net. Erickson Eck is there. Back to Felino. Erickson Eck sends it to the line for Dumba. Cross ice Brodine. Wild again try to use the high in the offensive zone play, but Fiala's shot deflects into the corner, and Larson has it there for Seattle. Seattle centerman Yanni Gore did a great job of recognizing that, and the Fiala did not have as much room as Kaprizov did a little bit earlier. Sorting that out, that low to high play, a lot of communication has to take place, and Seattle did a great job right there shutting that down. Yanni Gord back in his own zone. Watch by Kaprizov as he sends it ahead. Lausanne at center ice. Donato sidesteps Goudreau. Larson. And now Merrill back to pick it up for Minnesota. Thrown into the glass by Donato. Lausanne a shot, and that went just wide. Johansson has it from back of the net. Feeds the wall and Dunn hammers one wide. The rebound all the way back down into the Seattle zone. Minnesota wants to change. So does Seattle. And here's Vince Dunn, the former St. Louis Blue defenseman. Susie deflects it down into the Minnesota zone. The Wild quickly counter. And here comes Pitlick for the Wild. Drops it back for Greenway. His pass. Off a skate, Dunn controls. Kulikov scrambles over to hold the zone for the Wild. Got it through in the corner to Hartman. Hartman throws one right through the crease. Goligoski held with his skate. Couldn't make a play, however, and here comes Blackwell the other way. Blackwell making his season debut for Seattle. Former New York Ranger scored 12 goals for New York last year in just 47 games. Pitlick takes a heavy hit from Tanev, who's been noticeable here early. Yeah, that's the second or third time he's taken runs at wild players. Greenway on the wraparound had it deflect off of Dunn. Tanev turned it over. Hartman a chance, and that went just wide before he's blasted by Tanev. And now Everly with it for Seattle. I mentioned Tanev earlier with a couple hits. Don't be surprised if Marcus Felino doesn't pay him a little visit at some point here. Schwartz out to center ice. Goligoski got a piece of it. Duhame tried to get one through to Bukestad. Now Duhame gains the offensive zone. Dean Evison reuniting this trio that had been what he called the best fourth line in hockey early in the year. Dumba shot blocked. He got it back. Dumba looking for a lane fire saved by Grubauer. Sturm, Bukestad, Duhame. They had been outstanding for Minnesota early. Brodine another shot, and Grubauer had a good look at it. He hangs on. We're past halfway through the first 0-0. Zero, zero. Kevin Fiala with one of the early good looks for Minnesota in this game. Yeah, again, we talk about the defenseman jumping up into the play. Look who makes this nice little pass. Matt Dubba jumping up to make that a three on two. Look at the athleticism by Grubauer to get from his right to left with two quick pushes is able to cover up that blocker side and that is the shot that Kevin Fiala likes. He likes to hit that low blocker on that shot. Philip Grubauer up to the challenge and keeps that one out of the net. Matt Dumba with it for Minnesota. Plays it ahead to Brodeen. Back now for Dumba. Brodeen deflects it in and the Wild will go to work with Felino in on the forecheck. Alexiak got there first. His clearing attempt. Caught in the official in the corner. Now Erickson Eck with it. He's tied up by Wenberg. Felino got it to the line for Brodeen. Into the middle, Fiala threw it to an open point. Dumba had vacated. Brodine steps up to intercept one at center, plays it safely back for Dumba in his own zone. But again, that's the second or third time now this period we've seen forwards up in the middle in the offensive zone. And the Seattle Kraken have done a real nice job of breaking that down. The Wild also have done a good job of keeping it simple through the neutral zone. They just know it's difficult getting through there. Kaprizov sends it back into his own zone for Merrill. It was one of the areas that Dean Evison was not happy with the way they attacked Vegas in the game against the Golden Knights on Thursday. Yarncroke comes to center for Seattle. Plays it cross ice. Goudreau back defensively for the Wild. Up to Zuccarello. 
Goudreau tied up by Lausanne. Two forwards down below the goal line. Got to be some communication. One of the forwards got to get out. The defensemen are wide open. Zuccarello with it. Tried to reverse it behind his net. Merrill starts out. Got it to Kaprizov who comes to center. Kaprizov floats it down toward the Seattle goal. Grubauer wanted to play it. Lausanne upended by Zuccarello. And Yarncroke carries ahead for Seattle. Donskoy had it knocked down by Spurgeon. And Minnesota comes up with a loose puck. Spurgeon to Goligoski. Back to Spurgeon. Wild completing a change. Hartman's in check at center. Johansson moves in for Seattle. Cut off by Spurgeon. Plays it back to the line. Susie across for Dunn. Dunn shot easily cleared away. Hartman hustling after it with Susie back defensively. Pitlick driving the net. Hartman centers. Pitlick scores! What a play by Ryan Hartman using his speed to come up with that loose puck. Beats Carson Soucy to the loose puck. Knows he can't do much with it. He's going to be on his backhand. And Rip Pitlick beats the defender to the front of the net. And that puck just squeaks over the goal line for Rem Pitlick's first goal in the National Hockey League. This slides right underneath Grubauer's glove. And the Minnesota Wild strike first here in Seattle. I mentioned earlier that Dean Evison had juggled the lines on the bottom six of his lineup card. Hartman playing between Pitlick and Greenway for the first time tonight. And what more can you say about the way Ryan Hartman has played this season? That's his second assist to go with a team leading seven goals. Nine points already for Hartman this season. And it doesn't matter if he's playing on the wing or in the middle and who his line mates are. Duhame nearly had a chance. Would have had quite a bit of empty net at which to shoot, but seemed like he got tangled up with Bukestad on the play. Alexiak chased here by Sturm. Leaves it behind for Giordano. Well, it's not a secret when the Wild are going well and playing their game, their third and fourth lines are going, and they did not create anything. And I mean, it was a difficult game in Vegas, Anthony, for them to create just because of so many power plays and six on five with the goalie out situations. But they've come out here ready to play early in this one. Spurgeon moves in, fires, and it was blocked. He keeps it alive. Fiala with it. Spins away from one. Fights off a Wenberg check. Fiala still with the puck. Got it back to the line for Spurgeon. Across to Goligoski. Into the middle, Fiala. Down the wall, Felino. Back to Goligoski. A long wrist shot. Hit a skate. Felino leaves it for Goligoski. Good time in the offensive zone for Minnesota. Goligoski with it into the middle and hops over Fiala's stick and back out to center ice. Fiala, strong play to hold off Jaden Schwartz as he goes back into his own zone. Goligoski to Erickson Eck. It's a three on one for Minnesota. Erickson Eck in. Tried to get it across to Felino, who was dumped on the play. And now we get some pushing and shoving. Erickson Eck leading a three on one for Minnesota. Wild up one. From one of the biggest stars in country music. What's up Minnesota, Tom Strett here. Not sure if you have plans for New Year's Eve yet, but if you don't, make sure that you get your tickets to come see me, Cole Swindell, and Connor Smith, December 31st at the Excel Energy Center. Tickets are on sale now. Perfect way to tune up for the Winter Classic, wouldn't it? Yeah, no question, no question. Brent Pitlick getting his first National Hockey League goal. I mean, I'm telling you, he's sitting there calm as a cucumber, but his there's things going through his body right now that he's never experienced. That is just an amazing feeling scoring your first goal in the National Hockey League. It's something you always dream about as a young boy playing street hockey with your buddies and knee hockey in the basement. Congratulations, Rem. Saw the game Thursday night include two players for Vegas score their first NHL goal. Now Minnesota gets one of their own with Pitlick lighting the lamp. And Minnesota holding a 1-0 lead. Zuccarello moves in here. Tied up by Larson. Couldn't get a shot away. And Yanni Gord sends it in behind. Lausanne starts it back the other way. Reaches center and fires it in. Merrill back defensively for Minnesota. 
Wild have done a great job defensively, only giving up two shots to the Seattle Kraken. This is two on three. This is where you want to get it in. Good play, Kirill. You've been on the end of your shift. Don't try to do too much. Live for another day. Be solid and smart in the neutral zone right here. Brodeen. Got it to Greenway. And across now to Brodeen. Brodeen with speed into the Seattle zone. Trying to work around Alexiak. His centering pass. Greenway fanned on it from the high slot. Johansson wraps it off the boards and out to center. And Alexiak controls to Donato. He's cut off by Dumba. Greenway back of the net. Absorbs a hit by McCann. Brodeen around for Pitlick. Donato wheels and fires. That goes wide. And the rebound all the way back down into Seattle ice. We didn't have to wonder if Ryan Donato was going to shoot that puck from the side or not. I mean, he hasn't seen a bad shot, that guy, in his whole life. He gets off the bus ready to shoot that kid. Scored 14 goals in the one year he played for the Minnesota Wild. All of them even strength. Geeky with a shot. Comes loose along the wall. Duhame. Able to fight through a Tanev check. Bukestad good at the line. Works outside of Susi. And it comes all the way back down on Talbot. He steers it aside and John Merrill will go back to set it up for the Wild as they make a change. 3.20 left in this first period. Rem Pitlick with his first in the NHL and the Wild lead the Kraken one zip. Kulikov out to center. Lausanne fires it back in. And Merrill's on it there for the Wild. Fiala goes across for Felino. Felino back out front. What an Erickson Eck. Fiala with it in the corner. Fiala tied up. Felino joins the fight. Wenberg comes away with it for the Kraken ahead to Everly. And Lausanne hits the Minnesota line. Chips it into the corner. Merrill back to pick it up for the Wild. Up the boards for Fiala. Wild doing an outstanding job. Coming out of their zone just so clean. You could hear Kevin Fiala talking to Merrill that he had time all the way up here from the press box. Turnover right here though. Board trying to drive toward the net. Cut off by Dumba. Donskoy with it. Donskoy takes a whack from Merrill. Hands it off to Giordano. Giordano flips it on goal and Talbot hangs on. We get a whistle with 2.11 left in the period. And yeah, we've watched Jordan, or, uh, Jonas Brodeen use his speed defensively. Here he uses his speed offensively. Finds Jordan Greenway in the slot. Unfortunately for Jordan, there wasn't a whole lot he could do with that. Puck was bouncing around. I mean, that looked like a play that we saw the other night in Vegas. The ice was just terrible. You can tell already here in the first period the puck, the ice is much better. We noticed when we walked in this morning how cold the arena was here this morning. What an amazing job they've done here in Seattle. This rink is just incredible. Alexiak fires. It deflects off the end glass. The net is loose. Dumba's able to get it restored. It still looks like it's off kilter in the Minnesota zone. I, I know for sure the referee saw it. And I know Cam Talbot's trying to get his attention right now, but he's waiting until the Wild touch the puck, which is what he's supposed to do. I guess. I, I mean, I don't know how that. How do, I don't. I don't understand why that wasn't blown down. So we we'll get a whistle. The net clearly was off early in this play. Yeah, it wasn't even. I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, look at Matt. Look at Matt, he's got such a big heart. Trying to do the the work of the officials fixing the net there. <laughs> And Cam Talbot saying, just please, geez, please leave it. I, I want to get a whistle here. Dumba plays it around where Donskoy controls for Seattle. Yanni Gord with it. Gord won a couple of Stanley Cups in Tampa the last two seasons. Big part of their run to the Cup. 13 total goals in those two Stanley Cup runs. Donskoy tried to cut to the middle, knocked off of his stick by Dumba. Picked up by Zuccarello, his pass deflected behind Kaprizov and out of play. Yeah, you were talking about Yanni Gordon. He's able to score 20 goals there in Tampa, only playing about 14 minutes a night, just playing in the shadows, all those superstars, and now getting an opportunity like most players that 
go to expansion teams. I understand that as well. I went through it the expansion year in 2000 with the Minnesota Wild, getting an opportunity that I'd never really had here before. And Yanni Gord's going to get a different type of opportunity from going from 14 minutes to now he's playing 19, 20 minutes. See if he can add to that those couple of those 20 goal seasons that he had in Tampa. I'm sure he will. He's a great player. Hartman sends it out to Goligoski across to Spurgeon, back to Goligoski. Spurgeon plays to the corner. Dunn and Greenway collide there. McCann now with it. Spurgeon able to hold the zone. And Pitlick sends it to the corner. This game has very much the feel we expected tonight. A tight, intense, defensive sound game. Only nine total shots on goal at this point. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe two or three grade A scoring chances for both teams. I know Kevin Fiala had one earlier. Obviously, Rem Pitlick scored. But yeah, just a real tight, hard helmet game. And this is the type of game when you're playing the Seattle Kraken, you got to be ready for it and you got to have the right mindset. And so far, the Wild have had the perfect mindset. They have not turned over any pucks in the neutral zone, which is what all they did two weeks ago when they played the Seattle Kraken. Giordano back. Duhame rides him into the wall. Merrill had it knocked away by Schwartz. Comes loose to center. Everly in. Knocked off of his stick. Kulikov with a good defensive play for Minnesota. Giordano tries to center. Sturm right there. And that will bring us to the end of the first period. With Minnesota in front after the first in the NHL for Rem Pitlick. Yeah, good for him. I mean, he's, he's played really, really well. But just the overall game here, the structure of the Minnesota Wild, giving up three shots in Seattle. Crack, and that's the best defensive period the Wild have had here over the last couple games. Rem Pitlick with his first in the league. The reward, an opportunity to chat with Kevin Gord. We'll do that during our upcoming first intermission. Minnesota 1, Seattle 0 after 1. Minnesota Wild Hockey on Valley Sports North is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Northland Ford. Visit buyfordnow.com and your local Northland Ford dealer today. And by TSR Injury Law. If you've been injured, call 612-TSR-TIME and put their winning team to work for you. Back in Seattle after 20 minutes, it's the Wild 1 and the Kraken 0. Next to me is former Golden Gopher, Ron Pitlick. You just scored your first National Hockey League goal. You did it for your hometown team. How special was that moment? Yeah, everything since coming to Minnesota has been really special. Um, you know, I wish it would have came a little bit earlier, but it, it's finally um, really nice to get on the board. And I think that, you know, like they always say, you want to give the credit to other people. And obviously I'm going to do that, but it's, it's really genuine. I don't know. Um, how, how much people realize how nice of a pass that was by Ryan Hartman, like on his backhand, looking middle, um, when he got the puck and just the awareness to see me and not only being able to see it, the execution on that pass, the saucer pass, it landed flat, right on my tape, um, like unbelievable, like unbelievable, so. It's one you're never gonna forget. To win the game, to make this night even more special, the neutral zone's gonna be key. What do you have to do? Yeah, we, we talked about that before the game. They, they clog it up and they're a fast team. They're, they're coming really hard. Obviously, I felt that right when we got out there. Um, they're coming in. Um, we have our own plays that um, we talked about and we're going to keep executing. And it's, it's nice that we have the lead going into the second here and we need to keep pushing and um, hopefully it'll end in our, in our favor at the end. Congrats on that. So happy for you and your family. Thank you very much. Rem Pitlick and the Wild have a one nothing lead through 20 minutes. When we come back, we head back to the studio and get the thoughts of Ryan Carter. You want fries with that? Good start as the Wild have the early 1-0 lead over the Kraken in visit number two to Seattle. We welcome you inside Mall of America studio with Ryan Carter. I'm Audra Martin. Much better start this go-round than last time out in Vegas. Great to see a good quick sharp game. Great to see a first goal, career goal for Rem Pitlick. Yeah, I think last time in Climate Pledge Arena, the Wild got caught by surprise a little bit. You know, a new arena, new team, really don't know what they're getting. I think they sat back a little bit. Tonight, they look a little bit more prepared. They had a game plan. That period was fantastic. They came in. They executed it well. Gotta love this play. Ryan Hartman, obviously on a roll offensively. Does a good job. Catches Carson Soucy in a bad spot. Give him a minus. Not something that's easy to do to Carson Soucy. Plus 22 here last year, but nice little play. Carson and Susie doesn't have to pressure there, does. Uh, Hartman with a little saucer pass over the stick. Hits Pitlick right on the back end. He's able to put that one in over Grubauer. But 
Uh, again, for we, Wes talked about it too. Grubar struggling right now. That's a, a probably a, a goal that shouldn't go in the back of the net. Soft little backhand play. Yes, he's got to push from one side to the other, but that's a very savable puck. Throw more pucks on Grubar. But again, when it comes to their preparation, the Wild do a great job, only giving up three shots against the Seattle. We talked about Ryan Hartman in the pregame show. No matter where you put him, he's going to find a way to find the score sheet tonight. Another example of that. But where would this team be without somebody like Ryan Hartman, who never skips a beat, no matter what position he's in? Well, and again. Again, you got to give him some credit because last game he was on the wing tonight he's in the middle he's got different players playing with but he plays his game the same mm -hmm. way and well at the end of the day he's getting the same results as well right like the yeah. puck's going in the back of the net Rem Pitlick on the receiving end of that one he's got to be very happy tonight that's a good feeling for the young player very special skate after that first goal hometown through the wild bench you get to be the first one through that was fun to see obviously uh, we got a chance to see the smile from him there in the intermission too so yeah. very excited for the young player that's a great spot congratulations to him he had to overcome a little bit of adversity yeah. this year, missing some games because of COVID-19 protocols. But anytime you get that first career goal, it's one to remember. And because of it, he has his team off to a good start. 20 minutes are in the books, and the Wild are up 1-0 over the Kraken. It's time for stats and highlights after the break. In the NHL for Rem Pitlick. And it comes from a great defensive play. The Wild did a great job that whole first period. Look at the speed of Ryan Hartman taking a peek into the middle of the ice to see if Rem Pitlick could outrace Marcus Johansson to the net. And he does exactly that. Look at the little quick peek in the, in the ice. And not only that, he got it over top of Carson Soucy's stick. And Rem Pitlick scores his first goal in the National Hockey League. And the Minnesota Wild have a 1 0 lead here after one. Armenard's game reset shot attempts 14 14. It was hard to find space in the offensive zone for both clubs. It certainly was. And the last time the Wild came in here a couple weeks ago, they did not do a great job of managing the puck through the neutral zone. That countered the Seattle crack, and that's why the Wild had spent so much time in their zone. They did a great job so far there in the first period. Second period faceoff from Seattle. Tossed. Buffalo. Sauce. Hot honey. to brave a little drizzle and cool temperatures. You don't even need a ticket. You can watch the game from the other side of the glass here at Climate Pledge Arena. A little bit like the old knothole gangs in the baseball world where the little kids could watch the yeah. game through the hole in the fence. Yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. I was talking to someone earlier this morning. You can't see, like they can't see Camp Talbot there, but no problem. We got a Jumbotron at about 100 feet from them so they can watch when the puck gets close to Camp Talbot from in there. Eberle into the corner, around behind for Wenberg. We're underway in the second period. Wild on top, 1-0. Trying to square the season series against the Kraken. Seattle beat him 4-1 here in Minnesota's first visit. Wenberg cuts to the middle, loose puck, and it finally is knocked out by Fiala. Alexiak in the skates of Eberle, and it ricochets to center. Final score that night a little inaccurate when you look at the way the game flow went. Seattle scored twice into empty nets to make the final margin 4 1. Yeah, I mean, Cam Talbot was outstanding. I mean, Seattle Kraken could have very easily scored five or six goals that night, only got two. Cam kept him in the game the whole night. Remember, the second period was where it got away from Minnesota. It was all Seattle in the middle frame in the first minute here. Kraken are in the offensive zone throughout. Yeah, and no, that was just from the lost faceoff off the beginning. But again, in the second period, it's the most important period for taking care of the puck, managing the puck through the neutral zone. Don't make any high risk plays. And I mentioned the Wild only gave up three shots in the first period. It was just because they did exactly like little plays like what's going to happen right here. Just get the puck in, got to keep it away from the goalie and get in on the forecheck. Gord throws it out front of his own net. Gaudreau in behind for Kaprizov. Kaprizov looks for Zuccarello. Out to the line. Dumba a shot. It's deflected and just out of the reach of Kaprizov. Kaprizov then ridden hard into the boards by Lausanne. Dumba couldn't hold the zone, but Brodine is back to cover up. 
Dumba starts ahead for Minnesota deflected in by Zuccarello cleared back out to center Brodeen right back to Zuccarello who fires it in. Hartman in behind to Kaprizov he at the side of the net and now it's controlled by Donato the other way. Lively Karam out of the corner Kulikov to Hartman. Dunn down from the line to keep it alive for Seattle. Kulikov trying to defend off the end boards. Donato jamming away from close range and Talbot there to cover for Minnesota. That's a tricky that's a tricky play for a centerman down there. Ryan Hartman was out in front of the net. He'd been on the ice for 50 seconds, dead tired. Do I clear the puck in the corner or do I just give it to Cam Talbot? There's a little bit of risk involved there. But Cam Talbot does a good job of keeping it out of the net. Not surprising to see such limited scoring chances tonight. The Wild number three, the Kraken number four, in terms of the fewest high danger chances allowed per night. Only Boston and Colorado have been stingier than these two clubs. Wild win the draw. Kulikov out to center for Greenway. Greenway fires it into Seattle ice. Pitlick tangles there with Susie. Greenway played it in but Donato starts it back the other way Pitlick back checking comes away with the loose puck for Minnesota leaves it for Kulikov and his pass off target intended for Hartman will be icing against the wild tickets for kids charities provide at risk children with experiences that inspire hope dreams and achievements for a lifetime celebrate and support this mission by attending the virtual inspiring futures breakfast on December 7th it's hosted by Dick Bramer each ticket includes an inspiration kit mailed directly to your home register at ticketsforkids.org slash breakfast Seattle Kraken 26 in the National Hockey League in the faceoff circle come up with this loose puck. Talbot knocks it away. Eberly tried to center. Merrill intercepts for Minnesota. Flips it ahead too far for Pitlick, and we'll get icing once more against Minnesota. Just a real tough play there if you're John Merrill. I know you want to try to get to the red line. You're dead tired. Just hoping that the linesman would wave that one off. Unfortunately for the Wild, they did not. Rem Pitlick leaning on his stick. This is one here. Ryan Hartman a little bit late coming into the faceoff circle. This is where if you're Camp Talbot, you need to swallow a puck or try to deflect one up into the glass to try to get a try to get a line change if you can. Hartman wins the draw. He's a perfect four for four on faceoffs tonight. Greenway to Hartman. His pass intended for Pitlick hit a skate. Giordano starts it back the other way. Kulikov there to claim it for the wild off the end boards for Merrill. Greenway tried to chip it ahead. Wenberg got a piece of it. Now it does come to center. Minnesota still unable to get a change. Now they'll get a couple of forwards to the bench as Alexiak starts it back the other way. Wenberg out front for Everly. It's off his skate into the corner. Bukestad there for Minnesota. Around behind to Merrill. The wild defensemen have been on the ice a long time as Hartman starts ahead. And a real smart play there by Nick Bukestad coming off the bench, yelling at Ryan Hartman. He's fresh. I'm going to play down low. That way Ryan Hartman could play right wing. Great communication. Especially during the second period when you got long changes there, the Wild are able to dodge a bullet. Tanev starts in for Seattle. It's Spurgeon with it. And Tanev around the wall. Dunn has it at the line. Tries to work past Sturm. Dunn cuts to the middle and rolls it right through the crease. Bukestad spins away from Blackwell. His pass behind Spurgeon. Susie holds his own. Susie moves in a shot, and that was deflected to the corner. Blackwell. Bump there by Bukestad. Tanev to the line. Susi, his shot out front. Bukestad got back defensively and broke it up. And now Nico Sturm starts ahead for Minnesota. Grubauer tees it up for Dunn back of the net. Four and a half minutes into the second period. Almost 25 minutes of hockey. We have a dozen shots on goal, six for each team. Donato back to Susie. That's like old wild hockey, early 2000s wild hockey. <laughs> Think, comes, things have changed a little bit in the last 15 years. No doubt. For the for the better. Folino starts ahead for Minnesota. Folino for Fiala. Folino tried to center Eriksson Eck. 
looking for the wraparound just broken up by Donato out to center Brodine with it and now Dumba controls Fiala knocked to the ice but Felino gains the offensive zone for Minnesota Erickson at back of the net Donskoy got there he's able to sidestep Fiala yarn croak out to neutral ice Dumba back for the wild got it to Felino Goudreau to Fiala all the way across Goligoski just failed to connect Goudreau Fiala back of the net wants Kaprizov in the circle Kaprizov with it back to Fiala and Gord knocked it away but Fiala holds his own right back down low for Kaprizov Spurgeon holds for Minnesota good stick by Goudreau Spurgeon out front for Kaprizov and it's covered by Grubauer Carson Soucy getting an opportunity here to play a little bit more. Four or five good years with the Minnesota Wild. Best part of his game for me was obviously his skating ability and his long, long reach and was an outstanding penalty killer for the Wild here as well. Getting Again, we talk about opportunities here. He was only playing 14, 15 minutes a game with the Minnesota Wild. Now he's up toward 18, 19, getting a, a good opportunity for a few extra minutes. And again, it's not always just about opportunity. It's you got to take advantage of it as well. Kaprizov well, had a good look right off the draw. It's still one zip Minnesota. So lead the Kraken one nothing on Monday. The 2020 Hockey Hall of Fame inductees will be celebrated. This has been pushed back because of last year's pandemic. Six uh, star hockey players and general managers going in, including goaltender Kim St. Pierre, who won three gold medals with Canada. Doug Wilson, a guy I grew up watching playing the North Stars with that big slap drive, and Jerome McGinley, what a wild killer he was. When I talked to Matt Dumba, he said he fueled my passion for the game of hockey growing up in Calgary. I loved watching him play. I loved the leadership he showed, and he made me love hockey and the Flames that much more. He's super excited to see Aginla go into the Hall of Fame on Monday, guys. They're very well deserved. Kevin hit it right. A long time wild killer. Yeah, I feel like I was part of putting him in the Hall of Fame. I was on the ice for a lot of those goals against. <laughs> Kraken come back the other way. Donskoy to Gord. Yarncroak had it poke checked away and Zuccarello sends it back to Goligoski ahead now to Zuccarello. Spurgeon gains the zone. Kaprizov cross ice Zuccarello. Kaprizov couldn't get to the loose puck. Gets tapped back the other way and Yarncroak has it. Been a rigid game, but a clean game. Have not yet had a penalty called against either side, and these clubs both among the six most penalized teams in the league this year. Only Arizona takes more penalty minutes per night than Seattle. Minnesota number six in that department. Merrill works to the middle, sends it back. Hartman fires, save Grubauer, rebound with Grubauer down, wild jamming away. And the whistle with the puck behind Grubauer, but the official had lost sight of it. Zuccarello has it on his stick as if to say, hey, uh, you know, this puck wasn't underneath the goaltender. Well, G Jeremy Lozon, number 55 defenseman, dove from the corner just to keep this puck out. Look, he puts his stick right in there and puts his body in there. Oh, there it is, <laughs> popped out. I thought maybe that puck was sitting along the goal line. And maybe squeezed over the top, but it does pop out the backside. Referee in good position there. Good position, except the puck was behind Grubauer sitting free in the crease. But where he was with all the trees there, there's no way that he was going to be able to see that that puck was two feet or just six inches behind the goaltender. I like to get on referees from time to time, but I ain't going to get on to about that one. Man. No, he couldn't see it from yeah, there. I just yeah. said it, that. Took away a scoring chance for Minnesota. Yeah. Matt Zuccarello has a loose puck that's not covered. Pitlick with it. Wild come to center with Greenway. Good at the line. Hands to Hartman. Tried to go back to Greenway. Broken up by Giordano. McCann had it knocked away. Here comes Pitlick in alone for Minnesota. Pitlick scores! Second of the night, and the Wild lead it 2-0. Have yourself a night, Rem Pitlick. 
First NHL goal in the first period. Second NHL goal in the second period. Let's see what he's got in store for us in the third. Again, Ryan Hartman with the play in the neutral zone. This guy is absolutely all over the ice. Forehand, backhand, he had his mind made up. He was at the end of his shift. He was a little tired. Fortunately, the Seattle Kraken players were pretty exhausted too. Couldn't get back in time and pulls that puck to his forehand. And we know this guy knows how to finish around the net and he shows those kind of hands right there. So Minnesota's newly formed third line with a pair of goals tonight. And the Wild with a two goal lead here in Seattle. Sturm around for Dumba. Can of in pursuit. Dumba holds his own. Sturm gives it back to Dumba. Spins away from Geeky along the wall. Still with it. And now it's Bukestad. He's blasted by Susie. Sturm steps up. Tanev knocks it down at center. Has Geeky with him. Geeky off the skate. Susie a backhander that sails over the top of the goal. Bukestad takes a hit from Blackwell. And Seattle's offside here as Tanev played it inside the Minnesota line. And that whole sequence that happened there with the Seattle Kraken in the offensive zone was, was basically a giveaway in the offensive zone. The Wild, especially in the second period, I believe it was Nick Bukestad behind the net. If you don't, if you can't find somebody in front of the net that's completely wide open, you got to hang on to that puck below the goal line. Don't give them any free breakouts. Freak breakouts. This is a team, Anthony, that has a difficult time creating a whole lot of offense by themselves. Just limit those opportunities. Like if they get it down here, just hang on to it down here until you can make a play offensively 100%. Spurgeon a long shot deflected by Larson. Eriksson after it in the corner for Minnesota. Fiala also on the forecheck. Spurgeon ducks by Schwartz. Mentioned that Gord was a two time cup winner in Tampa. Schwartz won the Stanley Cup with St. Louis a couple of years ago. Big run for him during that Stanley Cup run a dozen goals. Yeah, and he's off to a pretty good start here again for the Seattle Kraken. Nine points in his last eight games. Four time 20 goal scorer. Well rounded player. Larson winds, fires, and Talbot makes the save. Hasn't been very busy tonight. Just his seventh stop. And here's the turnover in the neutral zone. Ryan Hartman does a great job of reading it off of his skate. And again, that looks like a, a play there that he likes to move to make. This is his go to move. We don't know a whole lot about Rem Pitlick, but the way he took that puck to his forehand and went up over the, the goalie's pad tells me that that's, that's the one that he's got in his pocket that he likes to go to. He made that look pretty slick right there. I played with his dad in the, in the mid 90s in, in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and his dad was an outstanding player too. He was one of those guys that was one of the best open ice hitters I ever, ever played with. And little, he had a little Scott Stevens to him. He was a defenseman. A little different type of game, obviously, than Rem. I can tell you his father wouldn't have made a play like that. I'm sure he's listening at home. He'll get a good chuckle out of that. Goudreau knocks this one ahead. Puts on the brakes. Fires. Saved by Grubauer. And now Kaprizov. Lost it to Gord. Ahead for Donskoy. Pitlick picked up an assist in his first game with the Wild, then missed three games due to COVID-19 protocols. Here comes Donato in, knocked off of his stick by Kulikov. Susie pressured by Kaprizov. Before tonight, he had one assist in the three games since returning from the COVID list. But a big night tonight for Pitlick. Two goals. And the Wild enjoying a two goal lead. Loose puck lands on the stick of Johansson. And Talbot had to make one of his tougher saves of the night. And if you remember that game in Vancouver, he had taken a penalty earlier in the game, a really pivotal point of the game. I was a little worried that maybe he might not get back on the ice. Again, that's kind of Dean Evison's ammo, giving guys other opportunities. And Dean got paid off later in the game. And remember, he had a breakaway coming right out of the penalty box and tried that same move and just missed. 
Geeky lost it. Hartman with a takeaway and fires on goal. Saved by Grubauer. Hartman in the middle of everything for Minnesota. And tonight, a pair of helpers on goal scored by Rem Pitlick. It's two zip. Dean Evison's club has won four of their last five, and the offense has been clicking lately for Minnesota. After a little bit of a slump for four games, they averaged less than two goals per game. They're back on track over the last five, averaging four and a quarter goals during that five-game stretch. The interesting graphic for me, the shots per game has pretty much stayed the same through all of those games, so that just tells you, you know, you're going to go through ebb and flows during the course of the season where sometimes you're going to get some puck luck, pucks are going to go in. It's just part of the game when you play 82 games in the National Hockey League. Right now, it's going in for the Wild. Greenway tried to get it to Pitlick. This line has both the goals for Minnesota. I asked Dean about the limited minutes that the third and fourth liners got in Vegas the other night, and he said, yeah, we lost them a little bit, and then you throw in the power plays that we had, six power play chances plus two and a half minutes with the goaltender pulled. So we got to get him more ice time tonight. Bukestad, the little backhander knocked away by Grubauer and Carson Susi and Nico Sturm tangling a bit. Susi was interesting this morning when they said, well, you'll have a little bit of a book on a lot of these guys and just kind of smiled and said, well, they'll have a book on me too. <laughs> That's the little cat mouse game and Carson Susi is not happy at all with Nico Sturm. Felt like he got pushed from behind. I didn't really necessarily see that. Looked like his momentum just carried it into Carson Soucy and I mean, he was a great player here for the Minnesota. I didn't you know. I, I, obviously, the Wild between Capo Kakinen and him being exposed, you weren't sure how that was really going to play out. But those holes have been filled really, really well by Billy Guerin. We talked about the third pair and how great they've been so far in the first part of the season here. Kulikov and Merrill, not only have they been unbelievable defensively, leading the Wild in plus minus, they're delivering on the offensive side as well. Lozon plays it ahead. Bukestad goes down, Sturm back to Spurgeon, and across to Goligoski. Larson wraps it off the boards. Geeky sends Tanev into the Minnesota zone. He jumps around to check. Tanev had Spurgeon lined up. Spurgeon withstands it easily and then returns the favor, knocking Tanev to the ice in the corner. That's the third or fourth time there with Tanev. You know, this is such a big game for both teams. You got to be careful trying to even the score in a 2 nothing game. The Seattle Kraken have a difficult time generating any offense. There might be a different time during the year to, to make some payback. It might not be tonight. Players don't forget stuff like that. They don't. Long memories. Yeah. It's funny how that works. But it's interesting you bring up the desperation for these two clubs. I mean, it's so early in the season, but Wild were not satisfied with how they played in Vegas the other night. Seattle has lost five of their last six games since their win against Minnesota here a couple weeks ago. Fiala sends it around for Merrill. In stride at center, Kulikov drops it back to Felino. Felino for Kulikov in the corner, a centering pass. Eriksson Ek tied up. Kulikov tries to keep it alive. And now it's Schwartz back through neutral ice for the Kraken. And it'll be covered by Talbot. Then Jordan, Jared Spurgeon going back, just bounces right off him and, and he, Jared Spurgeon does not, not take many hits. He's just so elusive down there, and he just, I mean, he's been getting hit his whole life. That guy ain't going to go away. Brandon Tanev's got a little rat to him. There's no question about that. We saw that when he played there in Winnipeg, and he's a fan favorite here. Hair flying all over the place, and he's gotten off to a very good start. I mean, you know what you're going to get with Brandon Tanev. I wouldn't call him a dirty player, but you don't have to ask him twice to finish his hit. He, he's always played that kind of game. And I don't find him as a, as a dirty, malicious player that tries to really, really hurt players. He just plays the game really hard. Had a little scoring touch this year, too. A half dozen goals already. Scored one against Minnesota in the first meeting between the clubs. Goudreau battling with Gord. 
Brodine over to pick it up for Minnesota. Deflected out to center by Kaprizov. He knocks it away from Larson, but Susie was back defensively. Gord. Brodine able to recover and get a stick on that one. Gord up high in the zone. Crisscrosses with Susie. Hands it off to Dunn. Susie a shot right on. Talbot makes the save. And we get a whistle late in the second. Two for Red Pitlick and the Wild lead it. Two zip. Wild on top. Two zip late in the second period. Jared Spurgeon picking things up offensively. We saw him withstand the hit here recently, but Spurgeon has six points in his last five games. Yeah, he's been on fire and obviously great in both ends of the rink. One thing that I that really separates him from other players in the NHL, he understands time and score. When it's time to go on the offense, like right now they're up 2-0. You're not going to see Jared Spurgeon taking any chances. They're, they have to score three goals. The other night we're down by a goal or two. Now all of a sudden you see you see Jared Spurgeon all over the ice. That's what makes him a special player. He doesn't just play the same way all the time. It's all about time and score. And Jonas Brodin has, has really started to figure this out the last couple of years as well too. And he's starting to jump up a lot more into the play, especially when the Wild are down. One of the things I've always admired about Spurgeon's game is his ability to jump up in the play, but then never get caught in the scrum. He's always able to stay just far enough away so he doesn't get tangled up and get caught down low in the offensive zone. He always seems to be able to catch up. Well, he's an amazing skater. You know, we talk about Jonas Brodine, but he, he truly is an amazing skater. Knows, you know, when you when you grow up and you're that small, you just understand how to navigate, how to move around the ice. It just becomes second nature because you've done it your whole life. Eberly trying to fight free from Spurgeon to get a chance there. Hartman and now Goligoski defensively for the Wild. Pitlick has it, and the Wild have numbers the other way. Here's Spurgeon jumping up in the play. Penalty coming, and it's going to go against Greenway. Minnesota had numbers at the line. Greenway collided with Giordano. He's arguing that he was the one with whom was interference committed. But instead, it'll be Greenway for interference. And Seattle goes on the power play. Jordan Greenway obviously not very happy, and neither is his head coach, Dean Evison. Yeah, it looked to me like he was just trying to stay on side at the blue line. And just obviously got he got inside here, trying to get inside on Giordano. And I mean if Giordano doesn't fall down there, they both clip skates there and Giordano fall, fell down. I mean it looked worse there on the replay than when watching it live. First power play chance for either team tonight. Seattle's power play dead last in the league, just 9.3%. They're one for 28 over their last nine games. Otto went down to play that, preventing Felino a shorthanded breakaway. Donato for Dunn. To McCann. Schwartz back to McCann. And now Dunn in the middle. Geeky a one timer and that goes wide rebound held by McCann. Got it to Donato and up high for Dunn. Geeky moves in his shot deflected by Schwartz and wide. Felino tips it past McCann but Dunn races over to hold the zone. A lot of time in the offensive zone for Seattle. Donato shot intercepted and Kulikov starts it ahead for Minnesota. Kulikov shorthanded for Erickson Eck. Erickson Eck tried to cut to the net. Knocked away by Donato. Minnesota needs a change as Seattle comes back the other way with McCann. Back and changing as well. 45 left in the power play. Goudreau around the wall. Held by Giordano. Eberly to Giordano. Into the middle. Wanted Donskoy and it's taken away by Goudreau. We talk about Freddie Goudreau and his ability to read plays and use his stick on the offensive side of things. Does a great job on the penalty kill using that reach to deny that chance for the Seattle Kraken on the power play. Johansson starts out down to 15 seconds in the Kraken man advantage. Johansson through center ice. Got it to Wenberg. Hartman wheeled and hammered one right off the skate of Everly on the second try. He clears. 
And a very effective kill for Minnesota. Greenway's back on in the wild. Nine for nine on the kill over the last five games. Carson Soucy tried to go ahead to Gord. It was knocked into the zone by Greenway. Minnesota has to tag up. And that will allow the Kraken a chance to get reorganized. Inside three minutes left in the second period. Kalagoski up the board. Spurgeon couldn't golf it out of the zone. Gord fires. And Talbot hangs on. Get Freddie Goudreau reading this play. Anticipation. He knows Donskoy is Donsko a right-handed shot in the middle. He knew that was going to be a bang-bang play. So if you just hesitate for a split second too long, Donskoy is all, along, all alone in that quiet area and gets a great scoring chance. This guy's been an unbelievable find. You see how the wild penalty kill has made some dramatic improvements. It was a point of concern early in the year, but you mentioned their run now of nine for nine. Well, again, you get so many defensemen turnover. Three new defensemen with Goligoski and Kulikov, and especially killing penalties, Anthony, maybe more even than power plays. Just getting in a rhythm and understanding small little subtle tendencies really does matter. And uh, you know it takes a little bit of time to, to recognize what other players' tendencies are. And they look like they've got it figured out right now. Fiala at center ice. Goligoski got it back to Fiala who carries in. Cuts to the middle. Goligoski wanted to go back to Fiala but he was well covered on the play. Yanni Gord leads the charge for Seattle. Gord cut off by Kulikov to Donato. Donato cuts to the net. Saved by Talbot. Puck loose. Talbot wanted to cover. And it was actually a teammate that knocked it away. Now Kaprizov starts out for Minnesota. Seattle had only three shots in the first period. They have 13 here in the second. Kulikov threw it to an open point. Minnesota was changing. Nobody there. Blackwell and Merrill converge. Zuccarello to Kaprizov. Got it back to Zuccarello. He has Gaudreau with him at the Seattle line. Gaudreau cut off. Zuccarello looking across for Kaprizov. It just failed to click. Brodine holds his own, but it deflects off of Kaprizov and out to center. That three on two that happened about a minute or so ago on that little scrum around the front of the net is the first outnumbered situation the Wild have given up all game. They've done a great job. It was a job that really put them behind the eight ball when they played the Vegas Golden Knights. Too many two on ones, three on twos. They've definitely cleaned that up. And the Golden Knights had six odd man rushes in that game. Yeah, the Wild have just have been so good this year. Very uncharacteristic of seeing that many two on ones and breakaways. Dumba carries down low. Greenway couldn't find the handle in the slot. And the puck bounces out to center. Giordano jumps on it for Seattle. Good defensive play by Hartman. He's got Pitlick in for the hat trick. Pitlick scores! There come the hats. I see a wild couple wild hats out on the ice. Is that an instant replay from the second period? A turnover in the neutral zone while in their own zone. Made again by Ryan Hartman. All three assists on Rem Pitlick's natural hat trick. First three goals in the National Hockey League. Unbelievable. Ryan Hartman sees him, hits him right on the tape. Now you're thinking to yourself, is he going to try to do something different? Does not. Doesn't elevate that puck again. But look at the defensive play by Ryan Hartman. And then making the pass, putting it on the stick, and goes to his forehand again. And he had all kinds of room to shovel that in the empty net. What a night for Rem Pitlick. What a night for Ryan Hartman. And we've talked about Hartman filling whatever role. He might be the best example of what Dean Evison preaches every day, which it doesn't matter where you're playing. It doesn't matter who you're playing with. You're playing with somebody in a wild sweater. Just go out and play. That's it. And, he, and you know what? When he gets juggled around, he's not He's not down there knocking on Dean Evison's door, figuring out what the heck's going on. Just wild uniform, real simple. Go play, and that's all he does. And I mentioned this before, the other part of his game, Anthony, that I really, I love, and I thought always took a little bit away from his game, was his discipline. He's taken one minor penalty in the last 10 games. He's staying out of the penalty box, he's worrying about playing, and he's getting these extra minutes, and he's making a count. So the period comes to an end. A big night for Rem Pitlick. He has all three, 
and Minnesota. And now Carson Soucy getting in his face a little bit here as the horn sounds. Pitlick with three and the Wild lead it three zip after two. Yeah, great period for the Minnesota Wild, not just for Rem Pitlick, but the Wild did a good job defensively, kept everything on the outside, created turnovers through the neutral zone, and when they did, the Wild made them pay. A hat trick for Pitlick. Kevin Gorg will chat with defenseman Alex Goligoski during our upcoming second intermission. Minnesota Wild Hockey and Valley Sports North is brought to you by Toyota. Dear driver, hurry in and save. Toyota. By Connecticut. Better water flows from better thinking. And by Car Shield. Car Shield cars go farther. A fun night in Seattle so far. Sees Minnesota up 3 0 after the first 40 minutes. Drawn by four, another former Gopher, Alex Kalagoski, has an assist on the game tonight. How special is it for you guys as teammates to see a young man go out there and get his first goal and then get his first hat trick in the National Hockey League? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, great efforts on the goals. Um, you know, Hartsy, I think, set them all up. That line's really going tonight. And, uh, you know, for Rem, that, that's awesome. He works hard and, you know, he deserves that. Great structure defensively so far for you guys. A nice penalty kill late in that period. You know Seattle's coming with a push in the first 10 minutes. What must you do to slow them down and counteract that? Yeah, just the same stuff we're doing. Hang on to pucks. You'd be responsible with it. Keep our keep our shift short. All the all the little details that you know add up to to playing good periods and having good shifts and winning games. Solid effort so far. Go finish it off. All right, thanks. Alex Kalagoski and the Wild up three after two. When we come back, we head back to the studio. Really busy night throughout the National Hockey League. We'll get you some cool highlights next. Sports update. It's the Avalanche up two to one over the Sharks when Sam Gerrard dishes over to Alex Newhook for the one timer and his first goal of the season. It goes on to be the game winner as the Avs take down the Sharks six to two tonight in Denver. And we welcome you back inside Mall of America studio with Ryan Carter. I'm Audra Martin. Have yourself a night, Rem Pitlick. Why stop at your first career goal? Why not get your first career hat trick in the process? <laughs> Tip your cap to him. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think that that's normal, but. Uh... Uh, you know, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. He's obviously introduced us to what Rem Pitlick can bring on the ice. I think we've got to pay some credit to what he had to do off the ice to get here. Last year, Nashville, uh, in purgatory, he was on the taxi squad, 10 games, a lot of practicing. Then Nashville this year, camp, gets claimed at waivers at the end of camp, doesn't get any games, has to wait five to get his first chance at the Wild, has a good game in Vancouver, tests positive for the coronavirus, has to sit out for more, Finds his way back in, and now he's earned it. He really has, Audra. A special night tonight. He's played well. A couple of good goals. Flashed some hands. He's got some finish. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just exciting to see a young player battle that adversity and then go out and execute and play. And you love to see some wild fans out there to throw their hats on the ice in celebration of Rem Picklick. So well done, fans, out on the road in Seattle. We've got stats and highlights in your final 20 minutes coming your way next. On Valley Sports North is brought to you by Grand Casino. Let your story begin. And by Luther Group. Shop the Twin Cities' largest selection of vehicles at LutherAuto.com. Wild on top 3 0 after 2. Here's the Grand Casino story of the game. Across for Dunn. Dunn shot easily cleared away. Hartman hustling after it with Susie back defensively. Pitlick driving the net. Hartman centers. Pitlick scores! Sends it back. Hartman fires. Save Grubauer. Rebound with Grubauer down. Wild jamming away. McCann had it knocked away. Here comes Pitlick in alone from Minnesota. Pitlick scores! Second of the night. And the Wild lead it 2 0. Giordano jumps on it for Seattle. Good defensive play by Hartman. He's got Pitlick in for the hat trick. Pitlick. Scores! There come the hats. I see a wild couple wild hats out on the ice. What a night for Rem Pitlick. His first three NHL goals in the wild have a three-goal lead heading into the third. Yeah, they've played an outstanding two periods, just really keeping the Seattle crack into the outside, have, have controlled the neutral zone. 
going both offensively and defensively. That, for me, has been the biggest part, the biggest story through the first 20 minutes. Always want to be a 500 team on the road here. Got a chance to get two out of three with a big third period. We'll have the final 20 minutes from Climate Pledge Arena next. Get the best tips from the top pros. And Quite a night for Rem Pitlick. Just his fifth game with the Wild this season, his 16th career game in the NHL. Our Geico stats made easy. Minnesota's goaltenders have gotten stronger and stronger as games have gone on this season. Their save percentage in the third period, eighth best in the league in the overtime. It's been perfect. That's when you need your goaltenders the most. Yeah, and, and you know what? I, it's one, goalies that are 24 and not 34 struggle with that that's the mental side of the game and I think the more games you get under your belt the more years the more you're able to put stuff behind you when things aren't going great and if you remember Anthony the first six or seven games I mean they were still the other teams are scoring three four goals but it felt like every night there was one that went off of a shin pad or a, a goofy goal a goofy goal at goal and then all of a sudden he'd make a huge save down the stretch when he needed to and he's been so good Goligoski with a long shot Grubauer the save Fiala back to Goligoski. His shot blocked by Everly. Ricochets into the corner and comes out to center ice. Spurgeon throws it in. Rubauer out to play it. Alexiak comes away with it, got it to Schwartz. And now Carson Soucy with it. Dumba around behind for Goudreau. Freddie Goudreau starts out for Minnesota. Gord. And now Brodeen back for Minnesota. Zuccarello deflects it out toward the line, and Yarncroke brings it back in offside. Join the Wild and Securian Financial in showing appreciation to our hometown heroes. On Firefighters Night, when the Wild Battle Buffalo on December 16th, a special ticket offer includes a custom ball cap. Find your seats at wild.com slash team packs. The way the Seattle Kraken team is built from the goaltending and defenseman out, more of a defensive style team, probably better with leads, not really built for being down 3 0. Corello's shot sails over the top of the goal. You know, if you're the Wild right now, it's like you're coming around the last corner of the board you got a chance to finish the skunk all you want to do is finish it out that's it and, and, and you just you don't want to give them any life right the, the building's quiet everyone's fallen asleep don't take a silly penalty don't make a turnover in the neutral zone just keep getting it down here and grind away always make sure you got a high person in the slot Zuccarello works by McCann Back to Dumba, a deflected puck, and it just trickled wide. Hartman in the corner. Tried to go to Dumba, Johansson there. His pass deflected at center, scooped up by McCann. McCann drops to Donato, a shot kicked away by Talbot. Huge save by Cam Talbot, again. we just showed the numbers in the third period. That was an outnumbered situation. Cam gets out on top of his paint. Recognizes Ryan Donato off that spot, likes to shoot low blocker, gets his right pad on that. Merrill across to Kulikov. Spins away from Tanev, back to Merrill. Hartman sends Pitlick in to Greenway, who fires, and that's high and wide. Kulikov holds for Minnesota. Greenway wanted Pitlick. It skips by him, Galagoski, and it deflects out of play. Here's our car shield protection play of the night. Again, look at Cam getting out on top of his paint. If he's probably 16 inches deeper there, Ryan Donato has a little bit more to shoot at. And again, perfect position. 
great mental toughness we've seen it all season long. He's been a tremendous signing by Billy Guerin. Picking him off, I mean, he got him really early. Was it a four, four or five hours into free agency a couple of years ago? Didn't waste any time. And there were a whole bunch of goalies available that year. Talbot was the first one to go. Greenway got it out to Spurgeon. Back to Greenway, rifled across for Goligoski. Greenway grabs a loose puck, wanted to go down low with it, and Dunn takes it away for Seattle. Ever lead is Schwartz. Two on one into the Minnesota zone. A return pass. Spurgeon sprawling was able to break it up. That looked to me like it might have been Ryan Hartman as well. Schwartz tries to tuck one in and Talbot makes the save. Can we talk? We've mentioned before how the Wild, especially in the first two periods, have taken care of the neutral zone. An ill-advised jump up in the neutral zone. Gave the Seattle Kraken a two on one and the Wild have done an outstanding job of limiting those two on ones here. Jared Spurgeon coming back here. Guess who's there to save the day? Ryan Hartman, Jared Spurgeon doing everything they can to keep this puck out of the net. Jared does get his stick on it. Unfortunately for the Wild, it just pops past, past that right post. And the Seattle Kraken are still looking for their first goal here tonight. Sturm will draw against Yarncrow. Dunn works to the middle, across to Giordano. He tried to center, deflected by Yarncrow, but wide. And Duhame looking to force it out of the zone. It comes free to Yarncrow, a shot. Knocked down by Talbot. Dunn holds the zone. Wild bottled up here. Early in the third period, Donskoy had it knocked away by Dumba. Bukestad's pass in the skates of Dumba. Seattle still attacking. Donskoy a shot deflected over the top by Talbot. Gord and Donskoy. Now Yarncroke. Yarncroke out of the corner. Got it to Dunn at the line. Dunn's long shot deflects in. A centering pass intercepted by Brodine. He'll relieve the pressure, but it will result in an icing call against Minnesota. All kinds of turnovers again taking care of the puck. The Wild have done an outstanding job in the first two periods. But again here in the third period a turnover there at the blue line. Everyone's heading up the ice. Need your goaltender to make a save. And of course Cam Talbot is there to make the big save and don't like the way the Wild have started here in the first three or four minutes. You know the, they've given up three or four grade A scoring chances here so far in the three first three or four minutes got to tighten things up here a little bit again. McCann plays it around where Alexiak holds his own. McCann spins away from Bukestad tried to center Johansson denied there by Brodeen. Duhame couldn't get it by Alexiak. Donato fires from his knees long rebound held by Susie. And Brodine is there for Minnesota. It deflects off of Sturm and all the way down. It'll be icing again against the Wild, and a long shift continues for a couple of these guys. Well, when this kind of a scenario happens and you know you've been out there for two minutes, obviously winning the faceoff is huge, but what you want to try to do here is you, you've got to pack it in. You, you don't want to take too many chances and chase people around. You're exhausted right now. Save your energy and wait for the other team to make a mistake. Keep everything on the outside. Hopefully they wrist one in there and can't tell that's able to glove it or something like that. Don't take too many chances. Just keep it as tight as you possibly can. Bukestad, Sturm trying to force it up the boards and out of the zone. Dumba. Able to flip it to neutral ice. Bukestad stumbles to the bench. So does Sturm. The Wild get a couple of sets of fresh legs on the ice. Dunn right back to the Minnesota line. Wenberg, they're good. Schwartz carries in. And Brodine able to get over and get a stick on it. Now Schwartz has it back. Leaves it in the corner. Eberly cut off by Spurgeon. He sends it around where Brodine's able to come up with a puck. His pass can't connect with Fiala, however. Out to the line, Schwartz can't hold. Fiala applying pressure. Duhame and Brodeen, the last two wild players to get to the bench, and now Seattle's offside, and Minnesota will get a chance to reorganize. A 
face off coming here at neutral ice and sometimes those shifts you just feel like if you can get to the end of it you feel set your lineup you feel like you got away with one you, you feel like you scored a third of a goal when you when you uh when you get in a situation like that where you get caught in your own zone you just i mean it happened to our teams a lot in those early years there and we'd get a big save from manny fernandez for Dwayne rolls and we'd go over and and thank him for swallowing that puck as like every night when we spent a lot of time in our own zone in those days. Blackwell relays it in. Merrill there for Minnesota. Blackwell out to the line. Wanted Larson taken away by Fiala. Fiala working against Larson puts on the brakes but goes down in a heap and that allows Grubauer to cover. We get a whistle. Early third Minnesota up three. Summary is this, it's Rem Pitlick's night, his first three ever in the National Hockey League, the natural hat trick. You hear Bob Motzko talk about him. He coached him at the University of Minnesota where he recorded over 100 points in three years. He said he's got the great mitts, but he's got the speed and the rink awareness to know where to go without the puck. And you can see that play out on these goals, the mitts and the open space. Rem Pitlick, what a night, one he'll never forget, guys. That's been a huge night. No doubt about it, and you can't overlook the guy in his line. I think Ryan Hartman has just been outstanding tonight for Minnesota. Well, Dean Evison talked about, you know, last time they played in this building, they got outworked, and I'm telling you as a player, when you hear your coach say you got outworked, Anthony, that hits you right between the eyes. You don't have to say much more if you're if you're a coach. Especially, I think, in a matchup between teams like this, who both take so much pride in being a hard-working club, Kaprizov to Gaudreau, back to Zuccarello. To the line, Spurgeon. Dolagoski back to Spurgeon. While again, employ a high forward on this forecheck. Gaudreau in behind. Zuccarello around the boards. Dolagoski leaves it for Kaprizov. Spurgeon. Dolagoski. Kaprizov flings it toward the net. Saved by Grubauer. Rebound just escaped Goudreau. Zuccarello to the line. Galagoski sends it back in. Goudreau. And now Zuccarello wheels and throws it toward the net. Lausanne is there for Seattle. And Gord plays it off the boards and out. Number to Greenway. Alexiak back. Dumba beaten to the puck by Wenberg and he trips him. The penalty coming against Matt Dumba and Seattle will get a chance to get the offense ignited. They'll go on to the power play. Minnesota. Well, that puck came toward Matt Dumba out in the neutral zone. It went underneath his stick right there. Now you're just digging as hard as you can. And if you can dive and get your stick on that, you would have broken up the play. Unfortunately, reaching out, Matt Dumba got his stick tangled up there with the Seattle Kraken player. And the Kraken find themselves on the power play being down three goals. Second power play chance for Seattle. Giordano with a long shot. Talbot tracks it all the way and hangs on. And when you're a power play like the Seattle Kraken have, they're 0 for their last 20 here at home, not feeling great about themselves on the power play. I think as a help penalty killing unit, you put a little bit more pressure on them. You, you don't sit quite as much. You try to force them to make three or four good passes because you know they're not feeling great about their game. So I think that you might see a little bit more while taking some, not even just chances, but just being, showing a little bit more pressure all over the ice. Well, each team has had a player kicked off the faceoff dot. Kraken win it, Jordano with a long shot, that goes wide, Wenberg on the rebound, and his backhander broken up by Merrill. Wenberg out to the line, Jordano. Into the corner for Everly. Giordano with it. Wenberger drive. Pad save Talbot. 
Rebound loose. Donskoy throws a backhander wide. Kulikov stripped of the puck by Everly. Eric Sinek races over. Can't get it by Giordano. Comes all the way across. Hartman's there for Minnesota. He sends it in behind for Merrill. He goes back against the grain, off the glass, and all the way down. You said off the glass, off the top of the glass. That was about two feet from going over the glass that would have given the Seattle Kraken a five on three power play. Big play right there. That puck not going out up into the stands. Everly who leads the Kraken with two power play points this year. Goal and an assist. Spent most of his damage at even strength. Johansson back to the line. Then Johansson again. Wenberg sends it to the middle. Giordano. Everly cross ice. Wenberg moves in. Tried to center. They score. Johansson on the deflection. And the power play goal has Seattle on the board. Now we got a little life in this building right now. The fans going crazy. Power play goal. Only their first in their last 21 opportunities. Again, anytime the puck goes through the power play, like it does right there, you just find yourself in trouble. Jonas Brodeen slides out to block the shot. And Wenberg was a pass first guy, finds Marcus Johansson. On the back side there, all you have to do is just make sure you're strong on your bottom hand, and he redirects that puck into the net to give the Seattle Kraken some life. So now let's see if Minnesota can answer. Make sure this doesn't turn into any momentum for the home club in front of their home fans. Seattle has been a decent home team this year. Three wins, three losses. Their struggles have come away from home where they're one, six, and one. McCann had it swept away by Dumba. And now Brodeen. Back to Dumba. He's hit by Tanev. Susie will come back to pick it up halfway through the third. Wild with a two goal lead. Hoping to make it a winning road trip. Board to Blackwell. He fires, kicked out by Talbot. And Zuccarello's on the loose puck for Minnesota. Ahead for Goudreau. He's able to force it down into Seattle territory. Larson back to pick it up. To the line for Kulikov. And now to Merrill. Back to Kulikov in the middle. Zuccarello takes a look. Kaprizov backpedals, wanted to go back to Zuccarello on the give and go, but Gord steps in the passing lane. Now it's Yarn Croak to Blackwell. Back to Lausanne, he centers, and it just skips by Gord. Goudreau grabs it for Minnesota, reaches center and floats it in as Minnesota will change all five. Very smart play there by Goudreau. The end of a shift, getting the puck in. I know they maybe could have tried to make a play there with Kaprizov, but if you turn that puck over, you have to go back into your own zone and play with tired players. Good smart heads up play there by Freddie Goudreau. Balagoski. Eric Sinek leaves it for Felino. He had a poke checked away at the Seattle line. Wenberg attacks for the Kraken. Back to the trailing Schwartz. Penalty coming against Minnesota and Seattle will get another power play. So the Kraken are on the board. Now they go to the power play. Down by two. Marcus Foligno into the penalty box for a trip, and Seattle goes back on the power play. Yeah, the Wilder turnover at the blue line there, a little bit of an unforced error. And Marcus Foligno just tries to put his stick in there and gets caught in between the Seattle Kraken's leg. And he finds himself in the penalty box for a couple minutes. Kraken just scored their first ever home power play goal on their last man advantage. In the Wild have had some unforced errors here the last three or four minutes and have given the Seattle Kraken a little bit of life here. Wild win a faceoff, get the puck down the ice. That's a great way to start the faceoff. Who else wins the faceoff? Ryan Hartman. Here comes Giordano. Works by Sturm. 
Leaves it behind for Johansson, who has the power play goal tonight for Seattle. Wenberg. Leaves the line, Giordano. Back to Wenberg. Giordano. Donskoy retreats against Kulikov. Giordano with it. Back to Donskoy. Everly. Wenberg. Side of the net. Donskoy. And it was broken up just enough by Merrill where he couldn't get everything on it. Sturm with a clear. And a huge clear on his backhand. Nico Sturm to get that puck all the way down the ice so the Wild could get fresh players out there. So does Seattle. 55 seconds left in the power play as Vince Dunn starts ahead. Jaden Schwartz carries into the offensive zone. Gives to McCann. Into the middle, Dunn. Centering pass, Donato wheels and fires, save Talbot, rebound loose, Donato another chance, so does Schwartz, Talbot hugging the post, Donato trying to dig it loose, and finally a whistle stops play. And that's exactly what you want to see if you're the Wild. Anytime you're on the penalty kill and there's a scramble right around the front of the net, you always want to see four bodies. If you see three, there's a good chance the red light is going to be coming on. Now the puck gets inside. Look at Matt Dumba get back into the paint. Four guys right in the scrum there, fighting, scratching, clawing, trying to keep that puck out of there. Puck looked like it wanted to squirt back behind the goal line, and Jonas Brodin, with his glove, kind of kind of shoveled that puck back into Cam Talbot. I don't think there was anything illegal there, but smart play by Jonas Brodin. Wenberg will take the draw against Eric Sinek. Loose, Brodeen has it. Donskoy riding him. Wenberg. Plays across for Everly. In the middle, Giordano, 10 on the power play. Erickson Eck without a stick. Wenberg with it. Back to Giordano. Wenberg fires, save Talbot, and he hangs on. Another timely save by Cam Talbot. Yul Erickson Eck losing his stick as a penalty killer, working his butt off along the boards. Unfortunately, lost his stick. And this is where you need your goaltender to make a big save. Not just a big save, but no rebound. Able to get fresh players on the ice. One of those players happened to have a broken stick or lost his stick. Must be third period time. That's Cam Talbot time. Spurgeon around behind for Gaudreau after a big faceoff win by Sturm. Felino's out of the penalty box. The Wild are back at full strength. Polino has done tied up along the end boards. It deflects out to center. Goligoski's there for Minnesota. Across to Spurgeon. And now Sturm with it. Recovers it himself. Sturm, a backhander on goal, saved by Grubauer. Felino has it in the corner and just pitches it back in. Goligoski down from the point. Knocks it away from Dunn. Felino helping on the play. Giordano. Tanev sends it back into his own zone. Seattle wants to change. Inside six minutes left. Again, you don't want to give anything off the rush here. Just at least force them to throw the puck into the zone. Blackwell races in. Cut off by Kulikov. Strong play by Kulikov to knock it away. Geeky has it. And now Larson. A long shot got through. Save Talbot. And he had it for a moment long enough to get a whistle. So we get a stop. Minnesota trying to hang on and make it a winning road trip with a victory in Seattle. Boston got a win at New Jersey today. Big day for Charlie McAvoy on the blue line. Nazem Kadri, a big night for Colorado. They hammered San Jose 6-2. Rangers victorious against the Blue Jackets. Winnipeg won in overtime 
earlier tonight. That allowed them to leapfrog Minnesota in the Central Division standings. Mark Shifley scored the winner as the Jets prevailed 3 2 over the LA Kings, who have been one of the surprise teams in the Pacific. Yeah, the Wild have set plays here off of defensive zone faceoff. See if Eric Neck can win this draw. Do not be surprised if Jonas Brodin goes and grabs this on his forehand to lose the draw. Drew Bauer to the bench. Six on five for Seattle very early. Still over five minutes left in this game. Felino fires at the empty net and sent it wide. Sturm collects it off the end wall and wraps it in. And the empty net tally for Minnesota makes it 4 1. Were you as surprised as I was when the goaltender came out that early? I mean, I, I definitely was. Down by two, absolutely. Yeah, I could see maybe with your down by three, but obviously that was indicative of because of the saddle. Kraken won the won that face off there, but Nico Stern does a good job of using his speed getting down there and when you're going in and you've got an empty net right there you don't want to miss any of those because that cuts into your sleep for a couple days during the afternoons and the wild have been so good against opposing teams six on five An empty net goal here by Sturm and it's 4 one. Well, if you're going to pull the goalie down by two with five minutes left, you pull him down by three. He's on the goal line right now. Doesn't look like it. Larson hammers it in. Yarn croak into the corner. Erickson Eck trying to force it up the wall. Brodine. And now Gord takes it away. Donskoy is there. He tangles with Erickson Eck. Into the circle of shot knocked down by Talbot. Gord on the wraparound on the backhand and Talbot able to get to the post and cover. Nice little soft little play by Yanni Gord to get the puck right in that soft little quiet area there for Donskoy. He's a right handed shot right there. Puck rolling a little bit. Kind of handcuffs Camp Talbot. Pushes as hard as he can with his left. Does get to the pad and goes Dominic Hasek on the bit. Grabs it with his blocker hand. We saw that for so many years. And now Dave Haxtell will pull Grubauer again. Four and a half minutes left. Down by three with an offensive zone faceoff. Lenberg against Hartman on the draw. Eberly out to the line. McCann long shot that hit Johansson. Zuccarello wraps it off the glass and out. And it'll be icing against Minnesota. Well, they always say if you're up by two go ahead and fire at the empty net. Don't worry about icing calls. Same would be true if you're up three. Zuccarello I don't think had visions of this one ricocheting off the glass and in. No he, I mean he tried to pound that as hard as he could off the boards to so it would slow down. The Wild have two right handed face off guys on the ice both Hartman and Freddie Goudreau. Schwartz to Eberly. Hartman hustles over got it by Giordano and it'll be another icing call against Minnesota. Be interesting coming back into the zone Ryan Hartman's taken both face offs lost on that side and has lost them both. If you're Freddie Goudreau hasn't been quite around quite as long. You go over and whisper to Hartman oh, there's no chance Hartman go, goes kid get out of here I'm taking the face off. <laughs> I love it. Draw controlled by the Kraken Giordano pressured by Gaudreau. He flips it all the way down Zuccarello racing in that will deny icing. Zuccarello tied up along the end wall by McCann out to Everly. He goes cross ice for Wenberg. Wenberg fires it in. Kaprizov's there for Minnesota. McCann. Cross ice Everly. Giordano into the corner with it. Goligoski out to Zuccarello. He finds Kaprizov at center ice. Strong play by Kaprizov to get it by Giordano. And Gaudreau now tries to work free from Everly. Looking for Zuccarello. And that failed to connect. Schwartz has it with 3.10 to go. Now 
Well, so much planning goes into a road trip to try to make it as successful as possible, and it's not perfect, but this will go down as a memorable one. Particularly for Rem Pitlick. Here's a chance, but a giveaway by Hartman. It was taken away by Dunn. Schwartz into the middle. Geeky flips a backhander over the top of the goal. Two and a half to go. Yeah, the Wild have done just a magnificent job during this game. Only given up 29 shots, staying out of the penalty box. The last couple games that Cam Talbot has played in, the Wild have been giving up, you know, 36, 38 shots. It's just too many shots to give up to expect the kind of results you want. They've been much tighter defensively. Obviously, a six on five are getting a little more pressure right now, but keeping everything to the outside. Donskoy with it here. Wild with a chance to go home two and one on the trip. Gord sent it across. Geeky fanned on it. Couple of home games coming up this week. Before another road trip. Another three city trip. This one will head east. Where they'll see the Panthers lightning and devils. Geeky. Out to Gord. Long shot by Dunn. Sails over the top. And Minnesota. We'll get five fresh skaters on the ice. Giordano carries ahead, relayed into the Minnesota zone. Bukestad goes off the board and out. Giordano plays it across for Johansson. Johansson centers it deflects across Wenberg moves in and scores. Well the Kraken have a little bit of life here with a minute left in the game. Wenberg who's in my opinion been the most dangerous player made a great play on the power play earlier to Marcus Johansson on a shot pass. Got them their first power play goal of the season earlier here, and he takes the takes the ice that the Wild gave him to get a little bit better shooting angle, and he beats Cam Talbot up over the glove. Yeah, it looks like Dave Haxtall's called a timeout here for Seattle. Darby Henderson usually in charge of timeouts and setting up plays and making sure everyone understands their responsibilities. That's the job of the assistant coach. A lot of times on the bench as an assistant coach, you'll have a couple of boards back there and you'll have them already designed up so you don't have to design them up. You're already just grab the board and bring it over and it's ready for the boys. And have the personnel already listed on there. Yeah. You might make some changes during the games. If some guys are having a bad game, you'll make those adjustments between periods. And the reason I know that is because when I was an assistant coach in Tampa under Rick Tockett, he called a timeout with about 45 seconds left in the game. And he looked over and he goes, Walls, you got the board ready? And my heart fell. I forgot to, to draw up the sixth, the, the five on four play. And he was not very happy with me. That's why whenever I see timeouts and I see assistant coaches on the bench, always take me back there. We ended up getting the two points and laughed about it after. But. Well, Grubauer will head right to the bench here. They won't even waste any time. So it's still six on five for Seattle. Wild have one empty net goal already in the game. Seattle has a six on five goal and a power play goal. Erickson Eck wins the draw. Brodine played it across to Spurgeon. And now Spurgeon racing back with McCann on him. Out to the line, Giordano. A long shot goes off the end boards. Felino there for Minnesota. Fires at the empty net, but missed it wide. And it'll be icing against the wild with 42.8 left. Hey, let's check in with Kevin Gore. Still a lot to happen tonight in the broadcast. Wild Live, the post-game show. We'll take a look at a magical night for that man. Rem Pitlick, he'll join us. We'll get a nice interview with him and cap a beautiful night with the hat trick. We'll hear about Ryan Hartman and his impactful game. He continues to stay hot. We'll get to hear from this guy, Dean Everson, his thoughts on a nice bounce back win in Seattle the while they're putting together tonight. And a tripping call coming here. 
Fiala went down in a heap in front of the Minnesota bench. And McCann to the penalty box. So now with 38.9 left, Grubauer will return with a defensive zone faceoff. Great second effort here by Kevin Fiala. Just staying heavy with this play. And because he stayed heavy with it, the Seattle Kraken player had to haul him down. He's amazing with the skill guys, how hard they'll play at the blue line there when that net is empty at the far at the far zone. He knows if he comes up with that puck, it's probably going to be, well, it's obviously it's going to be an empty netter, but don't be surprised here if the Seattle Kraken move through the neutral zone. Grubauer will come out here even on a five on three. It'll turn it into a five on five. This is the first power play officially for Minnesota in this game. Kaprizov fires and that deflects up into the netting. Well, apparently not the netting. Fiala keeps it alive. Spurgeon to Zuccarello. Zuccarello carries down low. Kaprizov for Spurgeon. Back to Kaprizov. He goes cross ice with it. Fiala fires. Glove save Grubauer with 14 and a half seconds left. Well, this little setup is a little interesting. As you mentioned, this is the first power play. Kevin Fiala is usually on the other side of the ice. Zuccarello is at the bottom of the screen there right now by the blue line there. So it'll be interesting moving forward here to see the power play. Obviously, the wild power play 0 for 6. A couple nights ago in Vegas, this is their only power play, but maybe they're going to go to a bit of a different look when we get home in St. Paul next week. Big win there for the Minnesota Wild, getting two wins out of three, especially bouncing back after not playing very well here in Seattle a couple weeks ago. They did a great job defensively holding the Seattle crack into 30 goals or 30 uh, 30 shots on net and can't tell but did what he needed to do in the third period. So with the victory, Minnesota jumps back into the top spot in a very tight central division. Wild go two and one on the road trip and now sit with 20 points in the standings through 14 games at 10 and four. There's much more still to come. Wild Live is next.